When your nervous system is activated, your ego is actually driving the bus. Welcome to the second episode of Trigger Proof, a show that's dedicated to helping you curb your reactivity, to be at cause of your own equanimity and internal state. Why is that important? Because the way that you respond to external events will make or break your relationships, your business, and it actually has an impact on your health. And so this show is dedicated to helping you take what's challenging you externally and help give you the right guidance to transform it into power, into worthiness, into lovability. Because what happens is when we get triggered, we go into story and we lose track of our cognitive abilities to be able to respond and make healthy decisions for ourselves. And what happens is our intimacy with others becomes broken down. Our ability to hold down a career and connect to our higher calling becomes affected and everything falls apart. My name is Dr. Nima Romani and I just wanted to welcome you to our, our, our guests from last time. We had some great feedback from our first show. And for you, if you're brand new, I basically help couples who are stuck in relationship limbo, wondering if they should stay or they should go, and also disconnected from their purpose, their higher selves, I help them get powerfully aligned. We, me and my team, help them get powerfully aligned so that they can have better intimacy, better health, better relationships, and thrive in their teams, in their businesses, at their workplace. So I do wanna encourage you, uh, if you're um, joining in, to let me know where you're signing in from. I will read every single comment and answer every question that I can. Please engage with me on, on here. Let me know where you're from. And I'm here to actually serve you. We have some great uh, guests today. And what we're gonna be talking about basically is the intimacy upgrade, is what we really need in order to become trigger proof. Now, please understand, trigger proof does not mean trigger less. The reason why this is so important to me is because I have been a chiropractor for the last 18 years helping people primarily with stress-related problems and when they're coming in it seemed that when I got to know who they are every single problem was stemming as we went upstream with the same issue. A disconnection from self and where they are in the universe, why they're here, which then led to breakdowns in relationship with themselves, which then caused toxicity in relationship, an inability to feel seen and heard and loved within a relationship. Relationships become toxic, they become abusive, they become violent, they become completely disconnected, and the worst part of that, trauma actually continues to cycle through generation after generation because people aren't taking on the responsibility of doing the necessary inner work to heal from those old traumas and regulate their nervous systems. And it was my own experience creating and participating in a toxic relationship that ended up becoming violent and aggressive. It was the biggest wake up call that led me in towards this work and to discovering how to heal from that. And in this recovery, I made some discoveries that I knew that I wanted to share. Number one, I had to discover how did I get where I was? I had to take full responsibility for it, which then this is what we teach with our clients as well. And number two, once we've done that, is how do I ensure that these patterns don't keep happening again? And number three, if I can heal that within myself, and get vulnerable, raw, and real, and really fully own it, which is a painful thing to do, which I resisted, which my ego was like, hell no, because it's easier to blame somebody else, and it's easier to play victim, and I certainly, I certainly went there. If I could actually heal from that, what would it be like if I can actually take this information and help change the world with it? And so this show was born, and it didn't come alone. It came with some friends along the way. There were some enemies and some friends along that hero's journey, and and I'm going to share with you some of the things that I learned, how to basically become trigger proof. And the way that you do it is by taking it on. First thing that I want you to do, and tell me if this is relevant for you, number one, are you willing to take on that your children, your partner, whatever your boss is bringing up in you, are you willing to take on being the one to take control of your own emotional state? Or would you rather play 
like most people do when they get offended, confronted, or triggered, point the finger at somebody else and make them try to change and transform the internal feeling that they're getting. And so until I decided to upgrade my intimacy with myself, I was constantly at the effect of externals. What do I mean by that? Criticism and praise, two extremes of the poles. I was addicted to the praise, running away from criticism and running towards praise. And when I started discovering that this was all related, I started sharing this with other people and I realized I wasn't alone, that there's people out there who are stuck in relationships and feeling not seen and heard and not empathized. And they're throwing labels around with other people, disempowering themselves with those labels and when we just apply the principles of this intimacy upgrade, which I'm gonna share with you, all of a sudden, relationships transform because you now feel grounded and centered. And the person who left you, the person who wants the divorce or the separation from you and doesn't wanna be a part of your life anymore, all of a sudden, you don't see that as a problem any longer. You actually now are able to resource yourself. You've done the inner healing work to not only get rid of your own victimhood, but to actually empathize with the person that you once felt so oppressed by. And that's where you get your power back. And it's 100% available to you. The way that we do it is through an intimacy upgrade. I shared about this on our previous episode. Today, we're gonna go into nervous system regulation. And I got my good friend, Dr. Russell Kennedy here to share because he's a neuroscientist. So here's what happens. First, you need to regulate your nervous system. Second, you need to get complete with the primordial relationships of your life. Mother, father, ex-partners, the ones that are constraining you because of your resentment, regret, shame and blame. That has to get complete if you want to get trigger proof. This is how you upgrade your intimacy. And the third part, which we're going to talk about in a future episode, is how to dance with your dark passenger, that wounded inner child, that little ego part of you that gets re reactive to externals. Externals like criticism and on the other end, praise. The way we run after one and run away from another. And so today we're gonna to be talking about nervous system regulation, but aside from that in future episodes, we're gonna talk about empathic communication in order to upgrade your intimacy and transform that limbo that you're feeling and stuckness, not only in your career, but your relationships. You gotta actually learn how to master empathic communication. This has become my superpower lately because I admit, Empathy wasn't a high value for me before. I was completely one-sided into my own vision. And it wasn't until I did some of the work that I'm about to share and then be able to see and empathize with myself, I was better able to empathize with other people. And so you also need a community. This was my discovery and my recovery is that you can't do it alone. Transformation and healing happens in community and we regulate our nervous systems not individually but we co-regulate in community it's very powerful that's why your traditional one-on-one -on -one methodologies don't always work and so when i discovered that i didn't want to leave this out because when you get nervous system regulation and complete with your primordial relationships you develop a sense of presence that wasn't there before when you are complete with your dark passenger your wounded inner child and those primordial relationships all of a sudden you now have empathy and understanding for not only yourself but those people that you've been resentful towards for so long and when you are complete with that dark passenger and you know how to dance with that ego because you can't get rid of it you might as well learn how to dance with it and you've regulated your nervous system what happens and emerges on the other side is a feeling of authenticity of groundedness that the people around you will be like you know what there's something different about you you feel more grounded you feel more embodied centered and when you're in that space, external criticism or validation doesn't sway you. This is the key component to it. External criticism, which is on the negative from externals, and validation, which is the positive, which we seek one and we try to, try to eliminate or avoid the other, which was my pattern. You've now become so grounded and present and focused on your vision that those externals of credit and blame, you're able to kind of understand and empathize with them. And it's not like F the haters type of thing. 
What I'm saying is you actually can empathize with your haters. And I really wanna give a shout out to Gary Vaynerchuk because he has this automatically, but this I had to actually go through a process in order to learn. I wanna introduce Dr. Russell Kennedy right now. I have my little online studio here. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to acknowledge you um, because when I came to you almost a year ago, it'd be 11 months ago, right? When I first met you? Yeah, pretty much. I came and I was like, I'm going through a big problem. There was a toxic meltdown in my relationship and I needed help in unpacking this and getting complete with this. And I reached out to another male mentor in my community and he basically turned around and shamed me, blamed me and then uh, labeled me. And it was the most horrific time because I was so vulnerable that when I reached out to you, you basically could see right through my ego and see on the other side. And you've been probably the most influential person in my life over the last year. And it's an honor for me to introduce you to my audience. And of course, you're working with me and with my team, with our team. <laughs> you're, you, you've taught me, taught me how to really get conscious of that with our team. Uh, to transform people using this work that you've taught, which we're gonna go over in a little bit, but I just wanted to start off by acknowledging you and your contribution to all of this. And I just wanted you to tell me what you thought as far as the transformation goes, based on what I just shared, what's possible for people with that? Yeah, sure. I, I guess, you know, when I, I met you 11 months ago or so, you were in crisis. You know, you were deep in alarm. You were deep in the sympathetic side of your autonomic nervous system. You weren't doing any resting. You weren't sleeping. You were stressed out. You know, you were really, you know, you were really in alarm. You were in deep alarm. Yeah. At that point, when you're in alarm, there, there isn't a, an ability to empathize with the other person. You know, for you, when I look back at your childhood wounding, the fact that, you know, you had a twin brother, the twin brother and your mom went away for three months when you were about two and a half years old, for a child, that is devastating. So I'm not surprised that you needed to get it from the outside and that when that wasn't happening, you were starting to go into fight or flight. So when we're in survival brain, we don't see empathy. We, we don't see it. We just want right. to survive. You know, it's like you're being, if you're being chased yeah. by a lion, you're not going to look over at a tree and go, that would be a great treat for a tree fort. I could put some two by fours up there and it would work out great. So what I did with you basically is just get you into your body and regulate your nervous system so that you... Which what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. Yeah. So that you could actually see how to be empathic because up until that point, when you, unless you were regulated, you weren't able to see anyone else's point of view. And now nope. in the last, you know, nine months or so, specifically in the last three, you know, I really see how I, I noticed it in the resonance in your voice. I notice it in, you know, you're going to breath work, you're doing the work that you need to do to regulate that nervous system. Because if you look at the way the nervous system developed embryologically, it's the outside actually involutes and turns inside to create the spinal cord. So it's basically 100%. how our nervous system, how we feel the outside from the inside of us. It's really totally. interesting how that nervous system develops. So with you, just to shorten it up a little bit, you're in alarm. When you're in alarm, you, you, you can't see empathy and you don't see empathy even for yourself. You're basically in- 100%, 100%. So, so what we need to do is show you ways, and I've shown you ways, and you've done extremely well at them because you're like a, an A student for that kind of stuff, but you've done extremely well at learning how to ground and develop a new relationship with your nervous system, and that has yielded a new relationship with yourself that I really see, especially over the last three months. And again, I can hear it when I talk to you on the phone. There's a totally different resonance in your voice now than there was three months, even three months ago. So I can see that Beautiful. you're regulating Thank you. System, I can see you being more empathic and seeing other people's sides of things as opposed to that narrow-minded view that you had before when you were just coming from your childhood wounded and then i think that's what you're 100 helping people that's what we're helping people you know understand about themselves that if you operate from your childhood wounding you're not going to be operating from a place of your prefrontal cortex the, the, the part of your brain that really helps you and allows you to negotiate these relationships so you are moving from a place of lack and fear to a place of love and belonging 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, Russ. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. You're here as our, our neurological correspondent. I do want to get to the, the other stuff, but I just really wanted to start by saying this man has completely transformed my life, and now, uh, as a team, we get to do the same for people all over. Let's go into this. Nervous system regulation. Why is this important? Well, as Dr. Russ was sharing earlier, when you get this part right, you feel a sense of grounding. You feel a sense of presence and self-empathy, and you chill. You're not at the mercy of your ego and at the mercy of other people's egos and your habits and addictions. Chances are, if you're living in the Western world, it's like being chased by a tiger. Your nervous system is completely dysregulated, which means you're running on like adrenal fatigue and burnout. And in that space, you can't sense and interpret things. When your nervous system is activated, your ego is actually driving the bus. And as Russ was sharing, I was living like that probably, even though I was working as a chiropractor and then doing coaching, I was operating basically on like overload, redlining is what I like to call it. And I want you to take a moment and ask yourself if you can look back on the last two weeks of your life, look back on the last like six months of your life, what potentially has been running you? Where have you been? Have you been redlining? Where has your nervous system been? Have you been dysregulated? Have you been high alert? How do you know? Anxiety, lack of sleep, your digestion is shot. And in that space, you are easily triggered. You're not able to have healthy relationships with other people and with your clients, with your tribe, with your community. It's just completely impossible. Now that's exactly how I was going until I discovered this little triangle, how you can regulate your nervous system. Because when you get this part right, as Russ said, your voice changes, you're now present with other people and empathy becomes possible where it wasn't possible before. How? Well, the whole point of nervous system regulation is all about going from unconscious to conscious, okay? From unconscious to conscious. Because most of the time when you're in fight or flight, you're unconscious. And check out how you are. You're wanting separation from other people. There's an us versus them. Everything around you is unsafe. You don't feel safe in your body. And then you start to look and gather and collect evidence in your environment that you are unsafe. You start nitpicking at things and start evidence collecting from your, from your relationships uh, or your children. Uh, or your coworkers of why they're out to get you, okay? And this is a symptoms of a dysregulated nervous system. So what do you do? It all starts with the foundation I have here, breath work. So I'm gonna invite you right now to do this. As you're sitting, take a moment and notice your breath. It surprised me to discover that probably about 90% of my day was consumed with me not even breathing. <laughs> it was like shallow breaths. And when I discovered that your relationship with the breath is your relationship with the universe, that if you are shallow breathing, you're not receiving from the universe. And if you're forcing your breath out, <sighs> rather than <sighs> a surrender, your relationship with the universe is more of a forcing your way and trying to control rather than <sighs> surrender. So take a moment right now and just do a little audit inventory. What's your breathing been like? Do you have deep diaphragmatic breaths with a long pause and a surrender? That's the healthiest relationship of give and receive with the universe. If you don't have that part right, what happens is the way that you breathe is how you think. And if you're thinking like you're breathing, you're not receiving, you're in a lack and fear mentality as Dr. Russ was sharing. And so how critical it is for you to transform that by consistently going to breath and go and do breath work, conscious connected breathing, um, holotropic uh, breathing. Whenever I say this, people say, you know, is this like Wim Hof? No, it's not like Wim Hof. It's actually quite a bit deeper. So Russ, Dr. Russ, can you share with us a little bit about why that's so important to you and how, from a nervous system perspective, why 
It's so critical that we mind our breath and its role with the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic. Well, the first thing is you become aware of something other than your monkey mind. Like when you start focusing on breath and sensation, it grounds you in the moment that you're in. You go from unconscious to conscious then. Yeah, we get trapped in our heads and it's like, I can't, I can't pay the bills this month. I wonder if my, my kid's safe. You know, th that never ends. So when you focus on the breath, it brings you into the moment and then you're able to see things a lot more clearly because you move out of sympathetic overdrive, fight or flight, and you move into parasympathetic and then your brain changes, the blood flow to different parts of your brain changes where you actually see things differently. Have you ever thought of the same exact thought and one time it gave you like, oh my God, oh my God, panic and the other time it was like, yeah, I'll handle that. It's because you weren't in survival mode. When you're in survival mode, you don't see anything but survival. So if you're in survival mode with your partner or your kids, whenever you're in survival mode, you don't actually see the rational ability that you have and you act. That brings up a really great, that brings up a really great question. Sorry to interrupt you, Russ. I'm just gonna do that because it's what you say is, is pertinent and I wanna kind of direct it in, in, in the right way. Um, when you get triggered by your partner, or your boss, or let's say I trigger you, which happens once in a while, doesn't it? How do we take on that? And how do you take that on? And why is that important? And it just with getting you out of monkey mind in that moment, using that activation as a call to action for you to get back into breath. Well, I, I'm working on this right now, actually. I'm creating a course right now, and I call it the ABC. So when you're in you know, a problem with your kids, your problem with your spouse, whatever, A is awareness. Realize that you've gone into monkey mind. Realize that your brain is, is not present. You're in survival mode. B, focus on your breath. And if you can do a, a breath where you breathe in really deeply and expand your lungs, when your lungs are going to pop, it sends a message up to your brain that everything's okay. Because typically, from an evolutionary point of view, when we were stressed, we would breathe at a very narrow way, and that sends a message up to your brain. When you're breathing really shallowly, your brain goes, what's going on, what's going on? And then C is connect yeah. with yourself. Usually I just say, you know, just put your hand around your heart or just, just connect with yourself. It's a much better use of, of your time to rather than stick, sticking in your head and getting deeper and deeper into survival mode. So A is awareness, you know, become aware of the fact that your mind is going nuts. B is focus on your breath. Try and make your breath as deep and as expansive as you can. And then C, just connect with yourself. Those are the ABCs. And then go in and, and re-talk to your partner or then Beautiful. talk to your kids. Then get to a Thank place you. where now, you, now you're in a resourced, grounded place where you've got your rational ability and you can actually think clearly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. So the critical component here, breath work. I wasn't breathing. It blew my mind how often I caught myself in the day not breathing. So please, I want you to think for a moment and share in the comment section. What opens up for you if you can actually adopt this into your life right now? It's free, costs you nothing. Eckhart Tolle talks about it all the time. You get into your breath consistently. The second thing that we do, basically the breath is your link from unconscious to conscious. So next thing what we do to regulate your nervous system and help you become trigger proof is exercise and chiropractic care. I don't really need to go into this too deeply. Chances are that you're running under a fight or flight. It's like you're being chased by a tiger with financial pressures, with relationship pressures, with work pressures, all of that. And so it's important to do external things as well. Exercise helps to burn off that uh, stress, burn off the cortisol, and the movement in your body, whether you do yoga or tai chi, any type of movement sends signals up into the brain that actually shut off the stress response. It is critical, 100% critical, that you make that a regular part of self-regulation. Because when you do that, you're now more calmer and you're less in ego, you're more consciously aware, less stress in your nervous system, especially if you're getting adjusted regularly. And what happens is you'll be able to empathize first with yourself and with others. And when the activation comes, you're able to catch it and be responsive rather than reactive. The third part here, okay, is establishing habits and routines. Our nervous systems require structure. It's like a child when you raise them without structure, they have a tendency to get more anxious. 
and when you watch Caesar Milan when, in The Dog Whisperer, when people would show him, it's, it's a show that I highly encourage you to check out. It's a show when people show up with really challenging dogs with behavioral problems, the first thing he does is he gets them exercising and into habits and routines. Because once you have that and you have these habits and routines which are all geared towards regulating your nervous system, the habits and routines like gratitude, the habits and routines like counting your wins each and every day and acknowledging yourself. This is about self-regulation. If you don't acknowledge yourself, get in the habit and the routine of acknowledging yourself every single day, what happens is you start to use your partner or your job or money to give you the validation externally that you have been lacking giving yourself because you don't put that in as a habit and a routine. And you're unconsciously out there seeking for a relationship to give it to you because you're not taking the time and making a priority to give that in to yourself. I was guilty of that too. And it's a work in progress. I noticed that when I stick to my, which I'm not perfect by, by any stretch of the imagination, but when I stick to my habits and routines of journaling, gratitude, counting my wins, setting intentions for the day, gratitude for the evening. When I do that, I go from unconscious to conscious. I'm self-regulated. I feel more empathic, more mission-driven, rather than operating from a place of fear and lack, which is our default modes, the way that it is most of the time, and that's how we show up in relationships. You have the power to change that. This is really about self-regulation. And so the next part is what I really wanna get Dr. Russ to share because this is where he totally, completely changed my life is in the concept of attunement and getting into sensation, getting out of your head and getting into your body. And Russ, this is probably your gift and you discovered this when you were on, you know, he's a medical doctor, but he also has like, uh, you know, this spiritual kind of woo side that he's, he's totally also embraced and uh, which is what, what drew me to him in the first place. I'm like, oh my God, you're actually a, a cool MD. And so can you talk a little bit more about the self-regulating impact of consistently getting attuned and embodied and into sensation and why that's important? Well, yeah, it's a practice. You know, people say, oh, I did three deep breaths and I'm not better. It takes, you know, you have to practice when you're not in crisis. You know, I see couples, I see people who are struggling with anxiety. It's like, I did the three deep breaths and I, you know, I still was anxious. It's like, you have to do this stuff when you're not in alarm, when you're not in a crisis with your kids. You've got to practice this. And again, it's that, that old thing, that ABC. So be aware. I'm, I'm stuck in my head. I'm stuck in the monkey mind. Okay, what can I do about this? Well, I can focus on my breath. I can focus on sensation. The other thing I get people to do is put their thumb and their fourth finger together. And I've got Nima to do this for months and months now. And that takes you into sensation. And when you get into sensation, half the, half the brain power is now gone into sensation. And only half is left over to keep you going in your monkey mind. And then you get this picture where you see the big picture because now you're in a sensation a little more. You can see your brain and then you really connect with your breath, connect with yourself. And that will, that practice over the course of time will be there when you need it. It's like women when they take self-defense training. If a woman doesn't take self-defense training and they're, they're trapped by a man or trapped by an attacker, they freeze. But if they've had training and they've practiced it in their mind, practice will automatically go into that. And that's what I really have done with Nima. That's what I do with just about everybody is get them into this awareness practice, some breath first, feel your sensation, get into the moment, and then just connect with yourself and then just feel your breath. And then that will start to regulate you over the course of time. It's a practice. It, it helps right away, absolutely. But you, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Thank you so much, absolutely. So the fine art of nervous system attunement. It's basically getting out of your head. When you try to think your way out of a feeling problem, which is an alarm, is it an anxiety type of an issue, and you're trying to think your way out of it, it actually makes it worse. And so what I learned is it's important that you stay in your body as often as possible. And like Russ says, this is an ongoing practice. This is a spiritual endeavor. This healing your relationships this transforming your life is really shifting your relationship with who you are and it's the practice 
of getting out of your head and not believing your thoughts and getting into your body, <sighs> regulating yourself and then getting creative and intentional. That was a key one. And the last part of nervous system regulation, which is part of getting you to be trigger proof, is what I have up here is, I put it at the top, HV, it's living according to your highest values. You see, every single person has a set of values, whether they're aware of it or not. And when we start working with our clients in our program, what happens is the first thing we get you to do is to identify what your values are. Why? Because this is a critical component of self-regulation. Number one, you start to see that not everyone shares your values, which is self-regulating in, in itself when you realize that, oh, not everyone should view the world the way that I do. And that's okay. Doesn't mean anything about them or myself. And the second part is that now that I know what my values are, for me personally, my top value is teaching. If I'm not teaching, then I'm not regulating myself. If your highest value is horseback riding, or you absolutely love writing, you're a show woman, you're a dancer, and you're, you are suppressing that part of you that is your highest value, your nervous system will be dysregulated. So it's critical to transform this relationship with the world. You have to transform your relationship with giving yourself permission to put your highest values, the things that are most priority, into your schedule and to do them each day consciously connected that this is what I love. And when you start doing that and you get that part and you start to allow that part of you to emerge, you start to give your partner and your kids, your boss, your coworkers, permission to be themselves as well. And there's so little resistance because you're so grounded in who you are. I love teaching. Teaching gives me meaning. It gives me all of the things that I love. It helps me to raise the bar with myself. If I'm teaching, it forces me to be as congruent with what I'm teaching as possible. I'm not perfect. And I'm a work in progress to become as congruent with my messages as possible. In other words, my mess is my message. It gives me a, a reason to elevate my game and to deal with my shadow and my darkness. It helps me confront that and to raise the bar and to tell the truth. And everything that I love in, in my life can be accomplished simply by me teaching. It gives me meaning. That's why I'm doing this show. It's not just for you. It's not just so that you can benefit from all of my mess to message. It's not just for that. It's also, I get something tremendously valuable. Last week, I had a gentleman who I said, it's time for men to step up and learn how to regulate themselves. It's time for men to give themselves permission to get vulnerable, to tell the truth, to experience pain that they've been disassociating from so that they can then show up as better leaders for their families. Because I wasn't showing up as a great leader for mine because I was completely dysregulated. And so I had three men reach out to me. So all because I gave myself permission to live according to my highest values, despite internal resistance and external resistance. That is self-regulation. That is becoming trigger proof. And so what I wanted to do basically is just to share with you how to regulate your nervous system, to go from unconscious to conscious and the impact of what that can do for your life. Let me ask you this question right now. If you started to take this on and became a priority for you and you said, no, this is very important. I can't really step over this any longer. You made that a priority. What would open up for you in your life? I'd love to see in the comment section. I have my screen right there. Well, I actually have another guest. Um, this woman who reached out to me about a year, two years ago and said, I can't live the way that I am. I'm stuck. Uh, my career, I don't know what, what's going on. Uh, relationships are, you know, my health. The key one was my health. Almost didn't uh, kind of jump in because of a fear of time. Didn't have the time or I didn't have the money. She almost didn't jump in because of those uh, constraints that she had, but she did and took on nervous system regulation. This stuff of what we're showing you and a few months later um, has had a complete shift. So I wanted to welcome uh, Lisa. Can you hear me, hon? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Welcome. Now, I first wanted to say you going live like six months ago for me to just say, hey, Lisa, can you come and share your story live? What, what would that have done to you if I said like last year, for example, hey, let's do a live 
sharing vulnerably about what you've, you know, what you've uh, accomplished. I'd have totally ghosted you, went off, off the grid. Yeah. Totally. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, so what I'd love for you to do right now, just, you, you've, you've been paying attention to Russ and I here, right? So certainly you've looked back on yourself based on what I've been sharing all of this stuff and you've been looking and going, holy crap, that's what I've done. Because most of us don't give ourselves permission to look and go, wow, how far I've come. Can you share with us where you were before and what you noticed happened after you took on this work of nervous system regulation. Yeah, so when I first um, got connected with you, I mean, it was it was a, a very physical health inspiration, I guess, that you know I knew I needed to do something different because nothing else I had done before made a significant difference that stuck or that I could what was What were you dealing with that was the biggest constraint for you health-wise? So um, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune probably eight or nine years ago. And so not being able to keep different uh, vitamin levels at a healthy point, um, but it caused a lot of pain in my body and a lot of brain fog and some, a, a lot of these other weird symptoms that, you know, I used to go to the doctor because it kind of come on gradually. And I'd go to the doctor and was like, oh, we'll just do this. I'll just eat more bananas, just do all these things. And I did those things and it was just maybe helped a little bit, but it was like, it never, I never felt better. I mean, I worked with a nutritionist for, I don't know how long she goes, oh my gosh, you've been doing this for three months. You've got to feel amazing. I'm like, I don't feel amazing. And she goes, well, you're not doing the work. So I quit. It's like, okay, well, if I'm doing the work and I'm not getting results, so why do I continue? The very difference, I mean, it was when I first got to the, the live event in October and you started teaching us about the body, going inside, about the breath and about how the brain and the body are so connected in how we hold our, our stress and our stories and all of our woundings in our body. Like it's literally in the tissues that holds, that create that pain and that, you know, the invisibility or that crazy pain, you know, that, that doctors, oh, you're crazy. You don't, you know, yep. whatever it is. Totally. And so once, you know, I started the breath work and that was a, that live event was a weekend. And by the end of that weekend, just doing the breath work, I mean, my body just started processing stuff out of my body and it come out in uh, this emotion that I was fighting and holding back. And it was tears and emotion and it was a very physical experience and you know i'd go back to the hotel and i mean i was wiped out i mean i was like completely yeah. fatigued i mean that's a lot of years of trauma that we just completely cleared up just in our weekend training and then you kind of came home and you just continued with this kind of consciousness work and the attunement and so what are you noticing now as far as your health goes? And what are you up to now that's different? I mean, there was significant points along the training where I had learned that, where it made a difference. Like I, I noticed the difference. I couldn't tell you why, but I just felt that shift. It's like, I could feel, I was in a situation where I make maybe make a story about it and maybe hold my shame and guilt in my body. And all of a sudden I could see it like as a separate piece. It's like, oh, you know, I know what that is. Now yeah. I can deal with it and, and move on and not put it into my body. You learned how to self-regulate. Yeah, and once you did that, go ahead, yeah. After I did that one time, like that first time, it was just like my mind was just below. It was just like, oh my gosh, that's, that's what they keep telling me about. Nima and Dr. Russ keep telling me about. It's like, okay, now I can see those stories that we keep running through our minds. I can see that almost as a separate persona, a separate person, like, okay. And- Totally. And then I could separate that and I know who I, who I am and what that is. And I'm just like, yeah. I got this, this is awesome. And now holding in that, in my body and my, my body just feels better every day. Like I got more energy. And, and the, one of the biggest points was I wasn't expecting to be able to do that when I started this program. I mean, when I was, yeah. I knew what I was getting myself into, like doing this program, because I knew I needed to clear these past things, but I had no idea that this was even possible. Like this Beautiful. physical part of it. And now what are you up to? What are you planning this year? Oh my gosh. So I just threw my hat over the fence. Um, of completing a marathon, which it doesn't seem possible as far as like, <laughs> can I go out and run that race today? No, 
I've got a lot of work to do, but before I would never have been able to do it because I would have quit because I wasn't able to regulate my nervous system in those moments when I wanted to quit. And now it's like, and I can see it even in my little day-to-day -day choices at work. And I notice myself making different choices in those moments Beautiful. that I would have made differently because of all the guilt and shame that I was holding on to. Lisa, thank you so much for showing us what's possible. You know, like I can honestly say, you're not the same person that I met on that discovery call that day. You're so much stronger, you're so much more grounded, so much more regulated, and the fact that you just let us know just the past couple days that you're gonna do the impossible, what was the impossible for you, and it's the road to finishing, crossing that finish line, you know it's not gonna be easy. You know you're probably gonna to want to give up but what's really different about you right now that I'm noticing is that you believe that you have the confidence to be able to pull it off because you know that you're not doing it alone right exactly so thank you so much for your participation and thanks for being on the show yeah uh, thanks for to have you hon yeah, absolutely. So there you have it. What becomes possible for you when you take on this work, when you actually prioritize you and transform the relationship with the most important system of your body, your nervous system. You live your life through your nervous system. And if it's dysregulated, you think that it's only impacting you, but it's not. It's actually impacting your children and your traumas and incompletes, unfortunately, will get downloaded onto them if you don't take on the heroic work of being at cause for transformation from unconscious to conscious. It's a journey that is not always easy, but the alternative is freaking unbearable. Let me know if you have any questions. Please mention in the comment section. I just want to say a big thank you to you for joining us for today.